All right, Mill Syrup Garage here with the Remington Model 14. I'm trying out a different camera too. You give the GoPro a shot, see if that works out a little better. But let's uh, let's move into this guy here. Does he fit into the uh, timeline we've been talking about, Mr. Remington 14? Oh, of course he does. Let's talk about uh, what was going on back in uh, 1912 when this thing came out. Well, we just did the Remington Model 8. You got to take a look at that guy. The Remington Model 8 was so far ahead of its time, right, that nobody was really ready for semi-automatic guns yet. It was almost like, uh, it's like a phenomenon like that, that sometimes things, they put they progress so quickly. It, it things like that skip steps. People don't like that. They get overwhelmed. That you know how it is with technology. Like a phone could come out that's so advanced. As much as we are into our cell phones, one could come out that's so advanced. I'm not saying that nobody would be into it. They would be like a niche of like techies that would love it. But for the mainstream, it could actually fail just because it's too complex. It's just too ahead of its time it's too advanced um te technology wise let's say like a phone that it would just overwhelm a lot of people and they'd be like i i don't even i don't even need that i'm not it yeah it could do amazing things but i'm not even i'm not even in a position where i need to utilize that you know it's kind of like what happened with the semi-automatics like um it's just like people just didn't take to them well so in 2008, when the Remington Model 8 came out, Remington, Remington realized immediately that they were gonna, uh, they they couldn't just put all their eggs in one basket with this thing. So they wanted to compete. Their main competitor back then was the Winchester. I mean, they were Savage and Marlin guns too that were good, but the, their main competitor was the Winchester Model 94 which was a lever action well, gun chambered in, uh, I think, 3030 then. There were probably a few chamberings back then, but um, I think 3030 was the main competitor. And they wanted something to compete with that, uh, a gun that needed you needed to do something to cycle the action. So they looked at it, Remington, and said, well, you got Savage, you got Marlin, you got Winchester. They all have these lever guns. Let's try something a little bit different. Instead of semi-automatic, let's let's try something different. We have this this pump action thing uh, going on that was very popular. And where was it popular? You remember uh, Remington? We had uh, Mr. Pettis Pedersen's design here for the um, the Winchester. Uh, I'm sorry, the Remington. Uh, Model 12. Well, I hope I didn't see Model 12 when I first introduced this thing. Well, I'd have to go back and check, and that would mean killing the video. And I promise not to do that anymore. So oh, this is this is the Model 12. Hopefully I called this the Model 14, which is what it is. But I hope I didn't say 12. Because that's really going to bother me. <laughs> I don't know if I can continue on. I'm pushing ahead. So this is the Model 12. This is... um. Pedersen's design. It was pump action. It was uh, kind of unique from the others. Just remember the, if you remember the magazine tube here, see how it travels with the pump, taking the uh, you know the rounds back and forth with it. It's kind of like delivering a round more than it's like letting a round come up and in. I mean, it was a, uh, it was interesting. We took a look. Didn't we take a look inside? We thought it was kind of cool that it had a little hole in the trigger there, so you could put a little lock through there if you had one. You see, I got one of those teeny locks right here somewhere. Let's see if it would fit in there. And I don't know where it is. It was hanging right on the board here. But um, Barrington was like, "Well, let's go to Pedersen. Let's see. Can you can you take this design? I remember again. Remember the lock up. If you watch the bolt, remember it locked up. See the front of it." Tip down and up and down into like a little recess, a little mortise that was in the top of the receiver. Well, so 
they went to Pedersen. Pedersen was like, yeah, I could, uh, I could do that. So here it was. It's got this, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the same exact butt plate that's on the Model 8. I think they just carried the, the stock, the back part of the stock right over. Um, and here it was. It's a takedown screw, huh? How do you like that? Uh, cross bolt safety. Uh, bolt here with, uh, so you might think that this is the release like it was on the Model 12, but the release is actually a button right in here to release. And uh, lo and behold, look at that bolt. What did it do? It uh, tipped down, went back. You can see the recess in there. And the bolt, watch when it closes, tips back up into place. Same lock up. Uh, there's a chamber, loaded chamber indicator here. Here's where we load from, directly into the magazine tube which is a little unique. Also, carrying on the magazine tube, as you can see, travels with the pump. And uh, same type of sight. And uh, this looks a little weird. You can see some spiral design here, and you're like, what's that all about? Well, you got to figure if you have center fire cartridges, and you line them up like this in a tube, um, you can see the danger right there is that uh, any type of recoil or shock, you could very easily set off these rounds. Um, that's why you never really saw these types of tubes with center fire uh, with spits rounds. If you did see tubes like this, um, it would normally be 45, 70 rounds that had like flat fronts. But these spits rounds, these are Levolution anyway. They have like that tip that's rubber. Well, let's just say it didn't, and it was a pointy round. Um, by having this spiral in here, it kind of did that to the rounds inside the tube so that uh, supposedly one wouldn't be able to touch the primer of the other. So that was his design here. Um, of course, you could have always just used, you know, rounded ammo like this as well. But it's kind of nice that... Uh, oh, and this is the 35 caliber, by the way. This is what this one is chambered in. They offered several chamberings here. They offered, um, when it first came out, well, let's throw some dates down. So uh, 2008 is when John Pedersen started on this thing, and he was just about ready to go in, uh, in 2012. So um, Remington, normally this is where the confusion comes in, where I might have said 12 before. They always add, like, two to their... I don't, I don't know why they did this, like, a thing. So, so this thing actually came out and was ready to go in... In uh, 1912, so they call it the Model 14. They always added two to the to the year it came out. Um, if that wasn't confusing enough. And uh, so from 1913 to 1934, they made this one. This is the Model 14. There was a Model 14 and a half that they made from 1914 to 1931. The only difference there, I think, were chamberings. It was chambered in 3840 Winchester or 40 40 Winchester. 4440 Winchester, sorry. So there's two uh, Winchester cartridges there. That was called the 14 and a half. And then at some period in 1935, they changed this thing to the Model 141. And they had made some other changes too, whatever. And, uh, and it was chambered in uh, 25 Remington, 30 Remington, 32 Remington at first, when it first came out. That's soon after they added the 35 Remington, which is what this one is uh, is chambered in. Um, and uh, the Model 14, so from 1913 to 1934, the 14 and the 14 and a half between those two, 125,000 of these produced. So that gives you an idea of how many of them were out there. The 141, I'm not really sure. I don't really have production numbers on that because I don't own the gun, so I, I have no idea. This one, as nearest I could tell, is a... February 1932 production date and uh, what else do we got that's it this one was pretty much matching numbers we took it apart there's a lot of numbers all over the place and they all kind of matched so it was a uh, it was a pretty cool acquisition I really love how smooth this action is this is just the smoothest pump action that there is out there let me show you how the takedown works or where was I? Did I cover the whole gun? Well, yeah, look, it has the caliber marking here, caliber marking here. They wanted to be really sure you knew what you are doing. Kind of like an interesting looking front sight. 
And uh, look, I'm always amazed by that bore. You know, it is 35 caliber after all. Look at the size of that thing. Oof. That's a pretty big hole for a teeny little rifle. Let's take a look at how the takedown function works. Pretty simple. Uh, these were pretty awesome, man. Pedersen. And Pedersen had some help from this one guy. I hate to not have that information here, but if you're really interested in who designed it, don't just take my word for it that it was Pedersen. There were a few guys that put some input in there, and uh, it was enough for, like, look at that, isn't that cool? It kind of slides up. I should have done that sideways, but it has, like, a channel here that it slides up in. And you can uh, you can cycle the action with uh, with it uh, broken down. Get that screw out of the way. These do get captured, but I'm pretty sure you could continue screwing and take it all the way out. It's not really meant to do that every time, but I'm pretty sure you could. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool action. And there's not really much going on back here. Just a, uh, a hammer. Is the hammer in here? Where is the hammer? Is it even in this part? I'm not even sure. Is that the hammer back there? I think not. I think the hammer's in this part of it, actually. That is amazing. I'm not even really 100% sure. Should have done my homework. It doesn't even look like it's a hammer. It looks kind of like, almost like striker fire. Strange. And uh, reassembly just slides right up into place like that. How awesome is that? How much simpler can that be? This is pretty cool right here. This I'm pretty sure that the, that's what that is, is, a loaded chamber indicator. I always forget when I shoot it to check it out, but it's like the bolt just completely covers that. So that's maybe not. I think the bolt just completely covers that area when it closes. But the round is like way up here somewhere, so I don't think that that's what that would be. Hmm. There's just a little hole to let out pressure if there's a misfire. Maybe that's what it was for. Once again, like I said, I should have done my homework. So, yep, 35 Remington. So it's chambered in the same chamberings that the Model 8 was chambered in. And uh, it was Remington just uh, figuring, like, let's put something out there to compete. Mostly what they were competing with. Here's what they were competing with. This might be our next video. This is what they were competing with. They were competing with this lever action, this Model 94 Winchester lever action design here that, that was all the rage. This was hugely popular. And... Uh, this is what everybody wanted. So this is what they were up against. And they were up against like a, an easy side loading gate, a very quick, you know, uh, reloading action and, uh, you know, an exposed hammer, of course. So, so the big thing about the Model 14 would have been that they would be making a big deal of how sleek it was and how it's hammerless, you know, so it's like how sleek and it's like a very uh, ergonomic design, easy to carry. The takedown feature was touted as being very important. That I mean, look at how small those those halves would be when you took it apart. This one's only, I mean, that's pretty short. You definitely fit this thing in a small bag, you know. So, and then I think they came out with a carbine version of this at some point. Uh, one thing that that freaks me out is the size of these swivels you see how they put like swivels on here and they're nice like this one this one doesn't travel with the magazine tube see that it's like on the ring excuse me so how cool is that just to have it right here and of course the other one's right here and that's even a bit wide it's a bit wider than like um hold on a second i thought about this and wanted to have them ready and then i forgot but like say you know you got one of these everyone's got these laying around right even though it looks like it would fit here, it does not. This is even too wide. Well, actually, this one just about fits in this guy. This one isn't bad. I did not know that. But it fits in there, but it's definitely a little too large. But this side, it was definitely proprietary, you know? This side, it's definitely too big, see? That would definitely need to be longer. 
it would be nice to have these guys that would fit on here to be able to put a sling. But now, what's funny is if you do a search online, like, you think you'd put in, you know, people would be looking for those since they're proprietary. And you would have people doing searches for uh, Remington Model 14 sling swivels. But if you put that in, you get, like, these newer kits that they would sell to be able to put sling swivels in, on it, you know. But I'm like, I have that already. I just want what fits on the stock. I don't know. I guess maybe if I found an original sling, it would have the connectors already on there. I don't know, but that is a little odd. And, uh, you know, you get used to these rear sights, and you, this one is an interesting one. I like the sight picture coming through this one. Plus, the front sight is really nice. It really, really jumps out at you. So that, my friends, look how they molded the sight into the... That's interesting, right? A little unique, a little different. Interesting how smooth that's molded into the barrel. I like that. The wood on this one is nice. This is a nice example. I got lucky with this guy. And again, that little teeny hole right there that you could supposedly put a little lock through to prevent the trigger from being pulled. It might have been the first trigger safety ever were uh, this and the Model 12 there. So that's the wind, the, uh, sorry, whoa, the Remington Model 14. That would have been one that, a slip up that I would have had to do the, redo the video over because Remington people and Winchester people would have been like, whoa, buddy, hold on. Can't make that mistake. The 14. Well, let me tell you, this thing really kicks your ass when you shoot it. The, if you think that the Remington Model 8 was bad, that thing had a whole, like, springy shock absorber thing going on with it or whatever. But this thing, there's no mercy. This thing just pounds your shoulder. There's no action going on here absorbing anything. This is like the only thing absorbing is you. And look at that butt plate. Ouch. Just standing this thing up on your leg when you're looking at it, but with this edge right here is enough to cut off the circulation. Could you imagine that thing punching you in the shoulder? Because then this is a this is a powerful round. You know, don't judge just by size. I mean, there's a lot of powder in there. You know, you can't just go by uh, you know the size of the case. It's like all right, so a thirty oh six case. This is the size of a 3006. Is this 3006? Let me take a quick look. Yeah. So this is 3006. Is it really that much smaller? I mean, when you look at it, it's like, it's really not that much smaller. Here's a, what do I got here? Here's an 8 mil. Is this, whoops. Is this 8 mil? Uh, this is 8 millimeter here. Look at that. An 8 millimeter is a powerhouse. I mean, you know, you're, you're fitting just as much powder in here. You really are. And uh, and it's available. I mean, it's out there. It's definitely out there, this 35 Remington. I see it around. So you can still have fun with it and play. These other calibers, not so much. So if you're going to get one of these, the part of taking it apart, too, there's this weird screw in there. You see that for, like, complete disassembly? For cleaning and whatnot? That's a little odd. I remember I that took some playing with to get that uh, in and out, out and in right, you know. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. If you do, where was I? If you're going to get one of these, watch the calibers. I would, unless you're just going for strictly collector value. If you want to shoot the thing, go with the 35 rum because you're not going to find this other stuff. And if you do, it's going to be like collectible ammo. It's going to be older ammo that you don't know if you could even really trust 100%. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, these things are, are supposedly really good for hunting. That's what I hear. So, enjoy your Remington 14 if you get one. And uh, I guess next, I just showed you the uh, Winchester, so we'll either delve into that one. I want to stick around this timeline for a while and play around. Um, and, uh, I got some examples to do it, so maybe we'll throw that one down next, or maybe I'll surprise you even with something else, and we'll keep teasing the 94 and work our way around it, tap dancing around guns like a, like a pro. We'll see what we do. Thanks for tuning in, and, uh, see you all later.